Hi, I'm Mr. Simons, and in this video, we're going to talk about the five sector model, also known as the circular flow of income model. And we're going to talk about what it is, what it means, how do you draw it? And then what does it signify about an economy and our understanding of the economy? An economy is a very complex thing. So the way I like to think about the five sector model, it is a simplification of how an economy operates to try and help us better understand what an economy is and the links between different parts of an economy. So if you think about it, an economy has so many different components and moving pieces and groups and interests and trends and changes and the list really, really, really does go on. The five sector model tries to narrow all of this situation into five sectors and how they interact with each other. So without any further ado, Let's get into the five sector model. And the best way to start is to draw it and to see those relationships and how each sector interacts with each other. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so here we are with the outline of the five sector model, the circular flow of income model, it's all the same. So what we start with is this two sector model. So we start here, so essentially we're starting up here with the two sector model. And the first two sectors we've got are, we've got households on one side and firms, businesses on the other. And this is our two sector model. What you'll see is that we add a sector each time and that this is what creates the five sector model. We're gonna look at the flows between these two groups and we'll put the same flows in the same color. So if we look at households, households interact with firms. So we'll do this going up here, coming down here, interacting here. So households to firms is that households provide resources to firms and households typically provide labor to firm. And then in return, that firms provide households with income. So in exchange for the labor that households provide, firms provide income. Now, there is also another set of flows that go between these two groups. So that if we think about the result of that process there, and we can put this over here, is that firms, firms provide households with goods and services from production. In exchange for those goods and services, households provide firms with expenditure. Expenditure is just a fancy word for spending. Let's just put that over there that households spend their money with firms and businesses in exchange for those goods and services. So each of these flows are linked. So you can see that there is a distinct relationship between households and firms and businesses. So that's our two sector model. Let's then move on to the three sector model. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add an extra sector. We're gonna add the financial sector into our model of the economy. Now the financial sector, uh, I think the best way to think about this is to consider that we are adding banks into our model of the economy. So that what we can say here, and let's maybe choose green, haven't used green yet so far, that households give money to the financial sector and then the financial sector gives money to firms and businesses. So these are the flows that exist. So what happens is that households will deposit their savings into the financial sector, and then the financial sector will then lend this money to firms and businesses so that the financial sector will then invest this money in firms and businesses, allowing them to expand and to grow and to contribute. So on this side, households deposit their savings. On this side, um, the financial sector invests in firms and businesses. Okay, so this here is the three sector model. We add the financial sector. Let's move on, shall we? So that what we've got now is that we are going to add, we're going to add the government sector into our model. And so the government sector is, well, would you believe the government and that they are playing a role in the economy. So let's use red because, you know, always watch out for the government. So then the households, 
have a flow here that households will pay tax to the government, that they will take money out of the economy and pay it to the government. And then the government, now it's not directly to firms and businesses, it's more in terms of the whole economy, but remember we're just simplifying things with this model so that if we look at this relationship that the government will spend so that on one side the government is collecting tax from households, on the other side it is spending money in the economy. And this spending could be on all sorts of things. It could be creating new roads, it could be uh, investing in different industries itself, all sorts of things. So when we add the government, we create the four-sector model. So we've gone from the two-sector model, three-sector, four-sector, to now the five-sector model. Model And so the fifth sector, the international or overseas sector, it doesn't really matter how you refer to that. It's either one of those is perfectly fine. So let's say that we grab silver here. So that here what we're saying is that households, they interact with the international or the overseas sector by being by buying goods and services from overseas. So what we're saying is that households buy imports from overseas and that if we look at imports, let's say this is two stars and we can put this up here, that imports, and M is just the symbol for imports and I'll go through these symbols in just a second, that that's goods and services bought from overseas. And then if we're looking at how does the international sector interact with um, domestic firms, so local businesses, that what we're saying here is that what happens is they buy exports from Australian firms. And what we'll do is we'll put three stars, we'll put that over here, that if we look at it, exports, X, is goods and services bought from local firms by the overseas sector. So we've got households spend their money on imports while the international sector buys exports from local firms. So this is the five sector model. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab two different highlighters and we're going to highlight a couple of different things. S, T and M and then I'll go I, G and X. And so what we can say here is that everything that is in blue, running out of space here, that everything in blue is a leakage and everything in yellow is an injection. And I'll explain that in just one second. Okay, so that was the circular flow model. And where I just ended up in terms of that discussion was in this distinction between injections and leakages. So injections is like money being pumped in to an economy. We are injecting, pushing money in to the economy. So when we look at investment, government spending and exports, they all represent money coming in to an economy. So for example, investment, that is money being pumped into the firms from the financial sector, which they can then invest again, spend, use to help grow the economy. Government spending, that is money that is being put into the economy that will accelerate economic activity and exports, that is revenue for firms who are selling overseas. Again, another injection into the economy. So injections will grow the economy. They will expand the economy. If we then think about leakages, we've got savings. So when uh, households take money out of the economy and put it into the banks, they're not gonna be spending that money. So that will represent a leakage from the economy. When households pay tax, that is money that would ordinarily maybe have been spent and used to boost economic activity. Instead, that is being taken out of the economy by the government and there's no guarantee that the government will actually spend that money itself. So tax is another leakage. And then the final thing is when households buy goods from overseas, when they buy imports, that the goods come into Australia, but the money leaves Australia. So that is a leakage from the Australian economy. 
So in terms of leakages, you've got S plus T plus M. Then what we do is we compare these two things. So if my injections are greater than leakages, the whole economy will expand. Economic activity will grow. But if leakages exceed injections, then more money is being withdrawn from the economy than is being put into it. So the economy will shrink. It will contract. And then the final situation, if injections equal leakages, we're in equilibrium. Things are equal. We're not growing. We're not slowing. We are just at equilibrium. Put any questions in the comments. And as always, thank you very much for watching.